step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you here i am to worship say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted. at uh, St. Paul Lutheran Church on this uh, 12th Sunday after Pentecost. No, pastor did not age 45 years and gain 100 pounds in the last week. But he has COVID. And so uh, consequently, uh, he asked me to uh, take care of the service. That's uh, the bad news. The good news is we've recorded the sermon, so you'll still get to see the sermon on the, on the screen. Uh, so, uh, I guess 
Uh, other than that, uh, we can open with our opening hymn, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquity, O Lord, who could stand? Join in the confession and absolution. The Spirit of God calls forth sacrifices pleasing to God, brotherly love, hospitality to strangers, Care for all in need, faithfulness in marriage and the family, fearless joy in the Lord, right faith and right worship. Let us ask God to forgive our sinful neglect of faith's power to have free course in our life. Almighty God, we confess to you as we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole entire being, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Alone In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work within us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is God who executes judgment. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. At the set time that I appoint, for not from the east or from the west, but I will declare it forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It is God who executes judgment. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
You may be seated for the next song. Good morning. Our first reading, the Old Testament reading, comes to us from Proverbs chapter 25, verses 2 through 10. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith has material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen, do not hastily bring into court, for what will you do in the end? 
when your neighbor puts you to shame. Argue your case with your neighbor himself, and do not reveal another's secret, lest he who hears you bring shame upon you, and your ill repute have no end. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes to us from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Let brotherly love continue. Do not ne neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be unfielded, unfilled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterous. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and Imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls, as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. The Holy Gospel. This morning comes from uh, the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and the Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, would, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Now he told a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this person. And then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. He said also to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. 
But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We stand and we reaffirm our faith in the uh, Apostles' Creed.
Good morning, and welcome this morning to worship at St. Paul. Uh, again, I apologize that I'm not there with you in person. Um, of course, I covet your prayers for myself and my family. Luckily, I am the only one who is ill in our household, uh, but certainly we, we covet your prayers um, and ask uh, for the Lord to bring healing quickly. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text, which you heard just read a few moments ago, uh, that we will be focusing on this morning, comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Oddly enough, in the Gospel lesson for this morning, uh, Jesus uh, meets a man who is ill. And uh, Jesus is going to heal this man who is ill. And as is often the case throughout the Gospels, but especially in the Gospel of Luke, the Pharisees, the religious elite, are standing on the sidelines waiting to pounce on Jesus should he decide to heal this man. And the reason for that is, is it is the Sabbath. And this type of work was prohibited on the Sabbath. So the Pharisees, there they are, standing, waiting, hoping that they can catch Jesus in this gotcha moment. And Jesus does what we would expect. He heals the man. But knowing that they were going to respond to him healing on the Sabbath in the way that they were hoping to, Jesus asks them a question in anticipation of that. He says, which of you, if you had a son or an ox, and that son or that ox fell into a well on the Sabbath, would not go and immediately pull him out? Now, notice the response here. The text says, they could not reply to these things. Ha! They could not reply to these things. I love this. Jesus has such a great sense of humor. Here are these men trying to trap Jesus in this gotcha moment, and Jesus flips the script and leaves them speechless. They could not reply to these things. A better way that we might say that is they did not have the strength to give him answer. They knew the answer, but they could not give it. They could not verbalize it. Jesus has caught them in, her, in their hypocrisy. Here they are waiting to pounce on Christ for healing on the Sabbath knowing full well that they themselves would pull their ox or their son out of the well had it had fallen in. And they know that if they answer that they would do such a thing, well then, there goes the tradition. There goes the law. Because they themselves would be guilty of breaking it. Now, these men, they are lawyers, they are learned and studied in the law. They know what the law is all about. And as lawyers, as ones who are quite learned, they typically exalted themselves to places of honor, to the highest places in society. And Jesus knows this. And so as he sits down to dine with them, he shares a parable with them. And this is what he says. He says, when you're invited to a wedding, do not sit in the place of honor. For someone of greater honor may come and you'll be asked to move or to sit to a lower place. Rather, sit in a lower place so that when the host may come to you and place you in a higher place of honor. Now, I would imagine that almost all of us here this morning have been to a wedding or have been a part of planning a wedding in some way, shape, or form. And where you sit at the reception is often a discussion. It's typically a big deal. And most weddings, or at least most weddings today, that decision is determined for you if you're a guest, right? You show up at the reception hall and they will tell you exactly which table you are sitting at or sometimes even what seat to sit in specifically. And everyone is kind of looking around, hoping that they don't get set, sit next to that crazy, weird uncle. But this is a big deal. Now, imagine for a moment, if you can, if your pride would allow you to do such a thing, but imagine for a moment 
that you go into a wedding hall at the reception and you're not a part of the wedding party and you're not the bride or the groom and you decide to go sit at the head table or maybe even not something so ridiculous. If your pride allowed you, you go in and you sit at the table where the parents of the bride are or the parents of the groom, but you're just a simple guest. No doubt you would be asked to move, and if you failed to move, you would be moved, right? And you'd be sat in the back. So what has Jesus done here with these words, with this parable? Well, again, he's flipped the script. He is healing on the Sabbath. He heals this man who is ill. And at the same time, he's calling these men to have humility. Now, for the Pharisees, this was a big deal. Did that guy, did that Jesus, the one who we just witnessed, heal on the Sabbath, did he just say that it is okay to go against the law and do this on a regular basis? More importantly, is he now saying that our position of authority, the position that has elevated us up here to this place of honor that we have taken for ourselves, is he now telling us that that doesn't mean a whole lot when it comes to social situations? What Jesus is driving at here is that not all law is equal. Certain regulations and traditions must be broken or even set aside at certain times. As is the case with here, Jesus healing the sick man on the Sabbath. Because here, Jesus shows us that mercy takes precedent over the regulation of the law. Because you see, Jesus, here in healing this man, he releases him from physical bondage. And this is what the Sabbath is all about. The Sabbath is all about Jesus. We cannot do it on our own. We need Jesus. We need him to come and to deliver us the goods that we cannot earn for ourselves, that we cannot deliver for ourselves. We need Jesus to come and to bring us forgiveness of sins, to bring us salvation, to release us from the bondage of sin, death, and the power of the devil. You see, Jesus here shows us that he must heal on the Sabbath because without his healing power, we are broken and lost. Without him coming and healing us on the Sabbath, we are left broken and lost. And so we need Jesus. We need his healing. We need him to work. We need to come before his throne of grace as we have done this morning and confess our sin. All of them. The ones that we are aware of and the ones that we are unaware of. The ones that we have committed with our hands. The ones that we have spoken with our words. The ones that we have even just held within our thoughts. We must confess that we are not even worthy enough to sit at the lowest of tables in the presence of the king. In fact, we ought to be sitting outside. We don't deserve his grace or mercy. We confess that we are unworthy sinners And we have come this morning as we do time after time again and as we should do each and every day, humbly seeking refuge in the infinite mercy and grace of God. And guess what? God, in all of his grace and all of his mercy, he comes to us with his words and he says, I forgive you, my son. I forgive you, my daughter. I love you, and I have endured the pain that you deserve that you would not have to. And I have taken your sin from you, and I have placed it there upon the cross. 
This is what Jesus does. He takes the lowest place. The place where there is no honor. And he does it for you and for me. And how do we know this? The scriptures tell us this. St. Paul writes, Being in full accord and of one mind, doing nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Having this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Here we go. Who though he, Jesus, was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of you and me, men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death upon the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. You see, as the Son of God, Jesus was deserving of the highest of all places. He's deserving of glory and adoration and places of honor. But instead, he willingly comes and he takes the lowest place. We confess that humiliation in the creed this morning. He was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was made man. He takes on your punishment. He takes on the wrath of God. He was crucified, died, and was buried. There he hung upon a cross, naked and derided, damned by his Father in heaven, experiencing the pain and separation from God in hell. There is no lower place than to be totally and completely separated from God. He died. He was buried. And he did this all, brothers and sisters, for you. He took the lowest of all places for you. And by going to the lowest place, Christ has earned for you a seat in the kingdom of God as he speaks to you these words this morning. Friend, move up higher. Not because you deserve it, not because you have earned it, not because you have worked for it, but because Jesus has made it so. Because Christ is working on the Sabbath and we are resting in that work. In this humility, Christ was exalted as he rose from the dead and ascended to the right hand of the Father. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and everyone who humbles himself will be exalted. That's what the scriptures tell us. Now, the problem for the Pharisees here is that humility is a difficult thing for them to grasp. It's a hard thing for them to see. And the truth be told, it's hard for us as well to be humble. It's been said that humility is perfect quietness of heart. It is to have no trouble, to never be fretted or vexed or irritated or sore or disappointed. It is to expect nothing, to wonder at nothing that is done to us, to feel nothing done against us. It is to be at rest when nobody praises us, and when we are blamed or despised, it is to have a blessed home in the Lord where we can go in and shut the door and kneel to our Father in secret and be at peace as in the deep sea of calmness when trouble is all about. It is the fruit of the Lord Jesus Christ's redemptive work on the cross of Calvary. The kingdom of God, brothers and sisters, is for all people. The gospel is for sinners. It's for the poor, the weak, the destitute, the crippled, the lame, the blind, the deaf, 
It is for the man with dropsy. It is for the old man with cancer. It is for the girl with all the tattoos that everyone seems to kind of ignore. It's for the homosexual. It's for the outcast. It's for the murderer. It's for the addict. It's for the socially awkward. It's even for those people that are just kind of weird. This is who the gospel is for. It's for people like you and me. Jesus made himself low for sinful people. He comes to us today on the Sabbath and he brings to us his healing. To hear our confession and to proclaim forgiveness, to proclaim those sweet words that we need to hear, you are forgiven. Friend, move up higher. In taking the lowest of places, Christ has been exalted. Those who arrogantly take higher places, well, guess what they're going to hear? Give up your place. Go to the lowest. And those who recognize their sin, those who see it and who turn from it and who run back to the Father and who call out to God for forgiveness, they will hear, friend, Move up higher. Take your place at my side and join me in paradise. Fellow redeemed, may we be humbled to live under the cross of Jesus Christ now, in this moment, until we are all exalted in heaven among the glory of the Father. May God grant that unto us all. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding May it guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Join in the offertory. This morning, uh, adding to the prayer request, Arnold and Alice Muggy, who are at Metal Lodge, for Megan, for healing, for Buddy, who's in rehab after a stroke, for Julie, who for a medical procedure coming up in September, for Leonard Batter, Shelby's brother, who's on chemo with bone cancer, uh, for Ed and Carolyn Ritthaller, who also have COVID, and of course, for Pastor Joe and his family for their illnesses there. Uh, let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, through the humiliation of your Son, you have called us to a place at your heavenly table. Teach us to treasure this place of honor and so to spurn the foolish honors of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, our shepherd, sustain the pastors of your church in their sacred charge. Establish them in your stead. Make their life of faith worthy of all honor and imitation. And inspire their hearers to honor you by honoring them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
O Lord our God, at the creation of Adam and Eve, you instituted and blessed marriage as a lifelong union of a man and a woman, and you commanded that it be held in honor by all as a sacred sign of Christ and his bride, the church. Grant your blessings, therefore, on all, to all husbands and wives and to all who have pledged themselves to be united in holy matrimony according to your word, that their lives together in your name may be sanctified by your Holy Spirit in all wisdom, purity, self-sacrifice, and love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of justice, you exalt the humble and humble the proud in your appointed time. We commend you to you, the elected officials of our land. Grant them the desire to govern as those serving and give them wisdom and courage to know what is right and to follow it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, grant peace and healing according to your will to the sick, the suffering, those troubled in mind, those suffering depression, and those with chronic illness and pain, especially Arnold and Alice Moggy, Megan, Buddy, Julie, Leonard Batter, Ed and Carolyn, and for Pastor Joe and his family, and all those whom we lift before you in our hearts now. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful God, you call on us to practice brotherly love, to show hospitality to strangers, and to remember all those in need. We come to you confident that you will not leave us nor forsake us, but will grant us all that we need for this body and life. Bestow on us the full riches of your grace for all the situations and circumstances in which your people dwell. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Remembering that here we have no abiding city, but that heaven is our home, give us your aid that we may, by true faith and godly life, prepare for the coming of our Savior, multiplying your mercy by loving our neighbor in need and loving you with all our body, soul, and strength and will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give to you his peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn.
you to check for in here for the announcements this week. There are a few in here. Uh, it is going to be the first Thursday of the month, so St. Paul Golf will be playing at White Pine at 10 o'clock on Thursday. And we have the annual Oktoberfest coming up, and Julie wants to say a few words about that, if I can unhook the mic. I could probably talk louder than this thing. <laughs> um, tickets go on sale today for the third annual Oktoberfest dinner and a uh, fun time. Uh, Nadine uh, Ridholler-Valentine and her sister Marseille Ketchum are assisting me this year, so it's really good to have them on board. Um, if you noticed in the bulletin that Norm is reuniting with his full band, the Norm Seeds band, um, so Judy will be on drums, and um, his uh, partner from Detroit, John, and um, also Ed are going to be playing, as well as Norm. Pastor and I had a really wonderful talk, and we want to make this a family event. We haven't had a family event for a long time because of all the, the COVID. So if you have children, and you are a member of St. Paul, you attend church here. All children, 11 and under, we're going to comp their ticket for them so that they will not have to purchase a ticket. Uh, children 12 and up do have to pay the adult price. Um, I think it's gonna be a great amount of fun. Norm said he'll have some things for the kids like the chicken dance and the hokey pokey and stuff like that. Um, so I just think it's going to be a really, really fun event. So tickets go on sale, as I said, today. And we are limited to a total of 136. So, and because Norm's band, this is the first time they've been together in over five years, he expects there will be a lot of people, friends of theirs, that will be coming. So it's first come, first serve. So get your tickets as soon as you can. And I'll be back there at a table in the fellowship today. And um, that's it. Any other announcements? Go in peace. Serve the Lord.